When you think about modern Middle Eastern airlines, what probably comes to mind are airlines such as Etihad Airways or Qatar Airways. But you probably wouldn't think of Egypt Air, an airline that Simply Aviation co-founder Felix flew earlier this year from Vienna to Dubai via Cairo on their brand new Airbus A320neo and the 737, both planes being equipped with very modern cabins and in-flight entertainment. And today I'm going to fly on the exact same route on their A220 and the Boeing 787 Dreamliner to see whether the airline has actually improved as much as it seems. So welcome to episode one of season two of Brutally Honest. Welcome to the first episode of our review series, Brutally Honest, in more than a year. It's actually the first episode that I'm shooting since the start of the pandemic, and a lot has changed in the previous few months. First of all, we've got a new camera, I've also got a new microphone, and I've got a new voiceover microphone. That's absolutely correct. And we've got some fancy new graphics here as well. And all of this isn't cheap, that's why this video is sponsored by you. Yeah, we're not going to advertise any shady VPN companies or build your own website things. You can support us if you want to. If you don't want to, that's totally fine. But if you go on our channel, you can become a channel member. It's sort of like Patreon just here on YouTube. And the cheapest tier starts at just two euros a month. That's 24 euros a year or around 30 US dollars. And it already helps us a lot. But I don't want to annoy you with all of this. This channel is about flying. So let's get to it. Our journey starts here at Vienna International Airport in Terminal 3 with a quick and simple check-in procedure. All international tickets, even the lowest economy class ones on Egypt Air come with two pieces of checked baggage included. From there I went through the gold track, thanks to my Star Alliance gold status, straight through the Austrian Airlines lounge, which I know isn't the most relevant thing for this video, but I just wanted to underline how good Austrian's lounges have become and how amazing the food is despite the COVID pandemic. Today's first leg, the three-hour flight from Vienna to Cairo, is operated by this Airbus A220-300, which was delivered to Egypt Air in 2020. If you ever wondered why Egypt Air's IATA code is MS, there's actually a very simple explanation behind it, because the Arabic name of Egypt, the country, is simply Misr. Egypt Air operates many of its domestic flights with the A220, which is why they have chosen not to install proper business class seats, but rather use the European way of offering business class, which is to simply use economy class seats and block the seat next to you. This means that the whole airplane features a 3-2 configuration, which is a standard economy configuration on all A220s. My seat will be 36A, which is on the two-seater side of the aircraft. Luckily, I won't have a neighbor on today's flight, which means even more space. The legroom is pretty much as I expected it for an aircraft of this size. Enough, but not really amazing. And as is usual on newer aircraft, this one too features USB ports to charge smaller devices, as well as Wi-Fi for purchase, which are amazing features to have on a three-hour flight. The rest of the cabin is pretty basic, but in a good way. Modern lighting, personal AC vents, coat hooks, and all in all, the seats are really comfortable as well. Put your seat back in upright position and refrain from smoking the whole flight. You are advised to keep your seat belt fastened while you are seated. Egypt Air wishes you a pleasant flight. Thank you.
though the aircraft was less than two years old, some permanent dirt was already visible in the cabin, as you might have noticed on the overhead bins during boarding, but also on the tray tables. The stuff on the tray tables wasn't easily cleanable, so they really weren't able to do much about it during the brief layover in Vienna, and there was no trash or anything lying around the cabin, so I do not have too much of a problem with it, since there really wasn't anything they could have done. But Egypt Air really needs to take better care of these newer planes if they still want them to look good in 10 years. Around two hours into the flight, lunch was served, and since Felix, only four months prior on the exact same route, only got cold sandwiches, I did not expect there to be hot meals available. But lo and behold, a chicken schnitzel with parsley potatoes, a typically Austrian meal on an Egyptian airline, accompanied by a box of mango juice, as well as a bottle of water, and Egypt Air also provided a piece of chocolate cake and some vegetables, which were accompanied with some salad dressing. And you also got a bread roll with some butter and cheese. So overall, a very sizable lunchbox for a three hour flight. And there actually were three different hot meals to choose from, which is unusual even for long haul flights, but especially on short haul flights, having that variety is pretty impressive. I went with the chicken option because I expected some kind of stew or curry, but I'll take a schnitzel every day. The only real downside of this meal service was the fact that the whole thing was single-use plastics. There was nothing to be reused by Egypt Air on a different flight, so everything ended up in the trash, and in a time where a lot of airlines are trying to cut down on single-use plastics, this was a bit painful to see. But the meal itself tasted great, so overall, I'm very impressed with this meal service. It was only during the flight that I actually discovered there were universal power outlets available below each seat, and that is quite rare for short haul aircraft, so it's really nice to see Egypt Air offering this in the A220 cabins as well. Just as the sun is starting to set, we're starting our approach into Cairo, and the views over the city were fantastic, which is why it was even more painful that the windows were pretty dirty on this aircraft. But then again, you have to be fair and admit that Egypt Air serves a lot of destinations in the middle of the desert and that Egypt is a very sandy country, which always leads to aircraft being dirtier than, for example, with European or North American airlines. And it probably also wouldn't be the smartest use of water to constantly clean planes so that foreign tourists like me just get a good view out of the plane. So really, I can't really blame Egypt Air for those dirty windows here. Transiting at Cairo airport is neither very difficult nor very time consuming because the airport is relatively simple and not too big. Our flight to Dubai was originally supposed to depart from the brand new Terminal 2, which you might have seen in our Air France to report that we just published recently. However, it was changed last minute to depart from Terminal 3, which on the positive side meant that we didn't actually have to change terminals, but on the negative side it meant that we were stuck in probably the oldest part of Cairo airport, which 
even though it was very clean and there was a lot of staff around constantly cleaning the whole terminal, it was very old and dated and the lounge was also not very impressive with a lot of, with, there was actually a lot of trash lying around the lounge that wasn't cleaned. The selection of meals and dishes was not good at all. So if you decide to book a flight with a transit in Cairo, try to keep it short because you're not going to need a lot of time to transit here and you're probably not gonna want to spend a lot of time here. Also the Wi-Fi was extremely bad, like unusably bad. I was not able to watch a YouTube video. It was barely enough to write WhatsApp messages. Our connecting flight to Dubai is operated by this 2019 delivered Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner, which is going to take almost exactly the same amount of time it took us to get from Vienna to Cairo, namely around three hours. Egypt Air's Boeing 787s feature a very classic long-haul cabin, although a bit bland looking, with a 333 configuration in economy class, with my seat today being 40k. A rather special feature on Egypt Air's Dreamliner is the footrest in economy class, which you won't find on many airlines. And the legroom in economy is really good, it's something that I wouldn't mind having on any 12-hour flight. Personal in-flight entertainment screens are provided as well, and as with many of those personal entertainment screens, there's a USB port right beneath it, and below the seat you'll also find a universal power outlet. So basically everything you need in a seat for a good long-haul flight. While the hardware of the in-flight entertainment system was state-of-the-art, the variety of movies and TV shows offered on board Egypt Air was rather disappointing, and certainly nothing if you compare it to an airline such as Emirates or Qatar Airways.
Surprisingly, Egypt Air doesn't just offer Wi-Fi for purchase, but they actually offer you 10 megabytes within a 60 minute time frame for free. It's not a lot, but it certainly is enough to check some WhatsApp messages or some emails. And on a long haul flight, this could come in very handy. Around an hour into the flight, the dinner boxes were served. And again, it was very similar to the boxes that we have gotten on our Vienna to Cairo flight, only that this time the chicken option wasn't a schnitzel with potatoes, but rather this chicken filet with steamed vegetables and some rice on the side. In addition to that, you again got the same box of mango juice, the same kind of bread roll, some more fresh vegetables, and in addition to that, the exact same piece of cake. But I don't mind, because, I mean, who doesn't like chocolate cake? You've also got a cup for some hot drinks, as well as a bottle of water, and your standard butter, salad dressing, and cheese combination. Again, I have to say, for a three-hour flight, having that kind of meal available is really cool, and I really appreciate Egypt Air providing it on those mid-haul flights. In case one of the few options in the in-flight entertainment system was of interest to you, Egypt Air does provide complimentary headphones in economy class as well. Here we are after a night of flying. We finally made it to Dubai. And this whole trip has left me with a very positive feeling of Egypt Air. Even though things were definitely not perfect, you can feel that the airline is on the right path. However, Egypt Air has I would say it has a very, it's in a similar situation as airlines such as Gulf Air or Ethiopian Airlines were in or are in. It's that airlines try to improve by first throwing a lot of money at their fleet and trying to improve by just putting a lot of money towards seats and cabin and brand new planes. But that's not the whole story. For example, a good in-flight entertainment system also heavily relies on the content. So having the screens and everything in place isn't the only thing. And that was something that you can feel on Egypt Air. There was just not a lot of selection there. The same thing goes for the meals. For two, three hour flights, having hot meals on, on the Vienna to Cairo flight, there were three different meal options. Something you probably don't even get on most actual long haul flights. Um, it's a good thing, but then again, in a time where airlines want to reduce single-use plastics, the whole meal was served in single-use plastic containers, which gave it kind of a cheap feeling and, and it takes away from the whole experience. 
So there are these little things that Egypt Air still has to work on, but overall, you can really feel how the airline has already improved and is trying to improve. And the employees, they are all super friendly. In, at Cairo Airport, there was so much staff around. But then again, I wanted to upgrade more of my flight to Dubai. I was trying to fly in business class because we have done an economy class video of their Dreamliner before, and we want to give you as much variety as possible. So I figured, you know, if there is a window seat available, why not upgrade? There was no possibility for me to do that because uh, on the one hand, uh, I tried to do it online before the flight. It wasn't possible to be done online because they use some third party company that sends customers who want to upgrade like customized offers upon request, which is a really weird system. And I did not get the offer after requesting one. And the other thing was that at the airport, they didn't take the same credit cards that they do on their website which was also kind of odd. So I feel like to improve as an airline, you have to make the whole process a little bit more seamless for the passenger. But overall, you can really feel that Egypt Air is on the right track. And if you ever come across one of their flights and uh, you consider flying with them, I would say go for it. Because I believe that from here, uh, it's only going to get better. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, in a couple of days, we'll fly back from Dubai to Vienna on the Airbus A380 of Emirates, and we'll see what it's like to fly with them in 2021. Uh, and until then, thank you so much for being here, sticking, sticking with me until the end, and uh, I'll see you soon for a new video.